the WeWork board members and, and investors have sort of long known that, that he's this very unusual character, the life of the party, et cetera. But they decided uh, very recently to sort of act upon that once the magic had worn off with the previously really high valuation that they had. Paul, what do you think is most damaging uh, in terms of these anecdotes about how Mr. Newman you know, runs the company or maybe conducts himself uh, that maybe has changed SoftBank's mind about him, or is it quite simply that it, that it's just the valuation, that if this thing were going out at 30, 40, upwards of that billion dollars, that there wouldn't be any problem? Yeah, I think part of it starts with uh, some of the marijuana usage on the airplane going to Israel, um, some of his behavior in terms of side deals, uh, his wife being involved in the business, trademarking the word we. There's a number of things that should have been, I, I would not call this uh, a regular surprise, like what we call a predictable surprise, that something like this was not going to go forward well. And I think the investment bankers and lawyers should have at least told him right up, like, we're not going to be able to do this deal unless we can kind of get you uh, a little bit more reasonable in terms of your behavior or have you step aside. That should have been understood way in advance. What, uh, Professor, you're a professor of corporate communications. If you were consulting to WeWork or to WeWork's mm -hmm. board, about the messaging yeah. of this problem, what would your advice be? Yeah, I think the, the messaging right now should be dependent upon the, the conversations you can have with Newman himself. I, I, I don't see any way that you get through this without him stepping aside. I, I don't think there's time to get him rehabilitated or to try to redo his image. I mean, if I were talking to the board directly and it wasn't him, um, particularly the soft bank, which is going to be more conservative Japanese investors, I'd say you got to get rid of him to do anything. I mean, you get rid of him, you try to work down the debt, hope the business improves and that the market isn't as volatile as it is right now. But, I mean, getting that $47 billion out there and making SoftBank invest on the basis of that, either they didn't do their due diligence yeah. or, again, the lawyers and investment banks weren't thinking. But, Elliot, clearly. there remains the small matter of... Uh, Mr. Newman's majority position as a holder of the shares. How much does he have, and is it a, is it a two-class share system where he controls the voting shares and and uh... yeah, yeah, he basically they don't detail exactly how much is his, but he controls something like thirty percent of the vote uh, or thirty percent of the shares, but has a, a, a majority vote. So he can the the S one the, the IPO prospectus says he can fire the board whenever he wants. So it's very much in his control. He very much has to be a, a willing participant if he's going to step aside. Uh, the leverage point here, one would presume, is that we were, needs more money. Uh, they're they're going to run out of cash sometime next year uh, if current trends hold, and SoftBank could provide some of that. Uh, an IPO could provide some of that, and SoftBank, given that they're moving against Newman, presumably won't be giving them money unless he steps aside. And Elliot, if it seems unlikely, for I mean, you tell me how likely you think it is that he would actually step aside. Um, what other avenues does WeWork have if they want the funding and maybe want to stay private, or if they even wanted to still go public? It, it's it's hard to to really know without being behind the scenes right now, which I wish we were. Uh, <laughs> my sense is that. There, there, it's kind of binary at this point, uh, again, from the outside, where either he's going to step aside or there's going to be a fight. And we obviously, hopefully, will find out really soon. Yeah. And so if he steps aside, Elliot, do you think that paves the way for an IPO? Yeah, I, I would imagine. I mean, maybe they, they need to, to come back in a bit. Certainly a lot of the, the language in the IPO, elevating the world's consciousness, et cetera, there was a lot of sort of mysticism attached to it. I, I think that was a very Adam thing. So uh, again, just guessing, I, if you brought in a new CEO, you'd probably do a new S1 and new positioning of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, speculating here, but, but it, it, it's uh, certainly the company's investors want it to go public. So, uh, Paul, tie it off here. I, I asked you if you were talking to the board, what would you advise them? And you, you were pretty clear that he has to go if they want to move forward. If you were talking to Adam mm -hmm. Newman, how would you try and persuade him that he's got to go? Yeah, I mean, I've had conversations like this before. And I, I think you have to just say, look, don't you want to protect this incredible business that you've created and let it prosper into the future? And to do that, sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself. You wouldn't be the first remarkably gifted CEO who had to step aside. And I think in the interests of himself and his own company, 
he needs to think about what's best for the company at this point. Yeah. And I don't think it includes him. I really don't.